Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 to 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 185. Please turn to it. Page number 185. The second problem that you see on the page, problem number 228. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here is what the problem says. It says that we have a triangle, or rather we, are going to const we, are, we don't have a triangle, we, we are asked to construct a triangle. We are asked to construct a triangle, a triangle that they are calling PQR. It has to have a right angle, we are told, it has to have a right angle at point P. That's one condition we have to fulfill. It has to, be, it has to be a right angle triangle and the right angle needs to be at point P. We are further told that the line PR needs to be parallel to x-axis. That's the second condition we have to fulfill. The third condition, which is, uh, which is uh, the most important condition, is that the coordinates of the points, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the three points of the triangle, P, Q and R, the three points that this triangle is going to have, point P, point Q and point R, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of these three points have, have to be such that, first of all, they need to be all whole numbers, they need to be integers. They need to be integers. Not only they need to be integers, but they, they need to be integers with certain characteristics. The x coordinate of any given point has to, fall, has to fall between negative 4 and a positive 5, and the y coordinate of any given point has to fall between 6 and 16. As you can see, it's not a quite straightforward problem. It's, uh, it's going to require some thinking. What we're going to do here, tell you what, what we're going to do here, just to make our life easier, just so we understand the problem first, is to do a simpler version of this problem first. So first we're going to do a simpler version, listen very carefully. Once you finish watching this video, once you finish watching this video, day number 373, the next video that you will see, day 373, I'm going to redo the problem as it is given in the book. But right now let's do a simpler version. So what I want you to do is watch this video, understand the problem. Once you understand the problem that we're about to do, then, try, then I would like you to try to do the problem that you see in the book yourself before you watch day, 70, day 373. And then compare your work against the work that we do, that the work that we'll do on day number 373. Do you understand? Let's do a simpler version first. Here's, here's a simpler version. Here's, here's the change that we're going to make. We're still going to have a right angle triangle PQR. The right angle is going to be at point P. The PR is going to be parallel to X axis. Everything is the same. The X coordinate and the Y coordinates of point P, Q, and R are going to be integers. They're going to be whole number. Except what we're going to do to make our life easier is to restrict this thing. The area they need to work in, we're going to limit that area. Instead of going all the way from negative 4, instead of negative 4 to positive, positive 5, let's go, from negative, let's go from negative 1 to 3. Let's keep our life simple. Let's go from negative 1 to 3. So this is a simpler version. Where can we put it? This is the version that we have created. It's not in the book. And let's limit the y coordinate all the way from, the, the book says that we can go all the way from 6 to 16. Let's, let's not go all the way from 6 to 16. Let's not go hardwired. Let's go from 2 to 5. 2 to 5. Okay? Let's begin the process. Let's begin the process. So we're going to start out by asking ourselves, well, we're going to locate the three possible points, uh, not three possible points, rather. We're going to locate the three points of the triangle. And we're going to ask ourselves, how many different ways are there that we can locate point P, how many different places where we can look? How many different places are possible for, to locate point Q, and how many different places are possible to locate point R? And that's all it is. That's all it is. We have to figure out how many different ways we can have the three vertices of the triangle. Is what it is. So let's start with point P. Let's begin with point P. So here's the solution. Let's begin. Let's begin with point P. And the question we are asking ourselves is. How many different places are possible? How many different places are possible for point P to be? Well, in order for us to answer this question, we have to look at this, this region that we are given here. 
and we're going to plot that region here. Okay, watch what happens. So we're going from negative 1 to positive 3 for x, from negative 1 to positive 3. And since we're going from negative 1 to positive 3, I need more room on this side. I just realized it. Let's move this thing right here. So here we go. 1, 2, 3. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3. Now I'm fully cognizant of the fact that this is not, that we cannot do all of these silly things in the real exam. We cannot sit there and go like this for, tw for 20 minutes. But as I always point out to you, the bloody obvious, which is that we are learning here how to do the problem. Of course, once we know how to do the problem, it goes faster. So negative 1 to positive 3. So let's go negative 1 right here. Negative 1 to positive 3. To, to positive 3. See, I shouldn't be talking at the same time. 1, 2, and 3. So that's the limit on x-axis. I'm going to redo this one. I don't like the way it came out. Okay. Similarly, y is going to go from 2 to 5. 2 to 5. 1, 2. 2 to 5, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right here. This is 5. This was 4, this was 3, this was 2, and, and this is 1, of course. Can you tell me how many different places can we put point P? Are you able to tell me now? Okay. Can you figure out now how many different places we can have point P? Well, let's, let's, let's go systematically. We are told that x coordinate can be from negative 1 to positive 3. Negative 1 is right here from negative 1, so x coordinate could be here, 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 or here. Or it could be, so this is negative 1, positive 2, which is the limit on y. y can be from 2 to 5. y could be 3, y could be 4, y could be 5. So these are the points. So these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There is our answer. The question was, how many different places are possible for point P, point P to be? Point P can be any of these points. Point P can be anywhere. For example, let me give you a couple of examples here. For example, we can put point P here. We can put point P right here. Point P right here. The condition is that P to R has to be parallel to x-axis. So we can put point P right here. We can put R here. We can have point P to R. This is parallel. P to R is parallel to x-axis. And we can have Q right here and we can make a triangle here. That's one possibility. There are several different triangles that we can construct. There are several different triangles that, are, that we can construct and the question that, that exactly is the question. The question is how many different triangles is it possible? How many different triangles is it possible to construct in given these conditions? We already know there are 20 places, there are 20 different places for P to be. The answer is there are, there are, there are 20 different places, 20 different, 20 different places where P can be had, where P can be had. We can have point P at 20 different places. We have 20 different choices. Are you with me? Let's go to point Q. Point P is done. We're done. And of course I need the room, so I'm going to have to erase all of these things on the top. Just give me one brief second. Let's go to point Q. Okay, stay with me in this story. It's very important that we stay together. Once, once point P is chosen, once P, point P is chosen, what do you want to work on next? Q or R? P, Q, R. Let's Q, R, Q. That's logical because they are alphabetical. Let's work on point Q. We have point P. We have located point P. I don't know where, but somewhere. Somewhere we have located point P. This was just a demonstration, you understand? Somewhere we have chosen a point P. Let's say, let's say, let's say we chose the point P here. Let's say we chose the point P here, okay? Let's erase that one so we don't get confused. Let's say we have, we have chosen our point to P to be right here. This is our point P. Once point P is chosen, once point P is chosen, so, so is the X coordinate, X coordinate of, of point Q. So is the x coordinate of point Q. Remember point Q has to be up here because PR has to be parallel. Why? Because point Q, point, because it has to make a right angle triangle. This has to make a right angle. This, this thing has to make a right angle right here. This for example, this is, this is R for example. This has to make a right angle. So point, once you choose point P, once you choose point P, so is 
So it's, we have also chosen the x coordinate of point Q. Tell you what, instead of putting it here, let me do it freehand here because it's getting too much. We already, we already done with this part. There are 20 different places we can have point P. We're done with that part. Let me do it freehand. Let me do it here freehand. Because this is getting to be too much. So once we choose point P, let's say we have chosen point P here, we have also chosen point Q. Once we choose point P, let's say point P, point P is x1, y1, then the coordinates of point Q are going to be x1, y2. The x coordinate of point Q has to be the same as the x coordinate of point P because of the fact that the, that the triangle has to be right angle. This is our point R, point P to R, P to R is parallel to x axis we are told. You see, once we choose point P, we have chosen the x coordinate of point Q. Point, well, we have not chosen it, it's fixed. Once the point, one more time, once point P is chosen, so is the x coordinate of point Q. Point, the x coordinate, of, x coordinate of point Q is fixed. The only choice we have right now at this point is to pick the y coordinate of point Q. It's up to us how long we want the Q to be, whether we, want, whether we want Q to go up or whether we want Q to go down. Once we have chosen here, we can go down, we can go up, and it's up to us whether we can stop here or stop here. Do you understand? So let's talk about it. So, so is the x coordinate of yq now, so is the x coordinate of yq now, or so is the x coordinate of point q rather, now the y coordinate of point q can be at, what can we have y coordinate? How many different choices do we have for y, y axis? Oh, y. Y we are told. I, I need the room. I'm, I'm going to erase this thing. I, need, I really need the room. The y we were told it has to be between Just give me one second. The y coordinate was between 2 and 5, we said, didn't we? Let me double check. I, I changed it. I changed the problem and I can't remember what I put down. Yes, between 2 and 5, we said. Between 2 and 5. So we have 2, 3, 4, and 5. There are 5 different places for y coordinate. There are five, uh, rather 4 different places. 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4 different choices for y coordinate of a given point. Out of those 4, we have used up one. Because here's the point P. Once we put P, there are right here. You see 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 2, 3, 4, 5. We can have here, 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 or here. But we have used we have used up one. Once we choose point P, we have used up one. So now the y coordinate of point Q can be at, at three different places. Which means we can have we can have point, point we can have point Q point Q there are only three different places there are only three different choices for point Q once we once we fix point P there are only three different ways we can have point Q you can see clearly here we can have it here or we can have it here or we can have it here those are the only three choices left for point Q that tells us that there are three possible places for point Q in other words this tells us that point Q can be had at three different places. That's it, we're done. Let's move on to point R. Don't forget. So here's our P, Q, and R. P, we said, can be, had, can be had at three different places. Q can be had at three different places. Now let's look at point R. Again, the same logic will apply. Once we choose point P, once we have chosen point P, we are limited. The y, the y coordinate of R is also fixed. The y coordinate of R is going to be should have written so large. If this is x1, y1, then this one has to be x2, y1. The y coordinates have to be the same. Same exact logic. Same exact logic. Once, once point P is chosen, so is the y coordinate. Same exact thing of point R. So, same exact thing. Now, x coordinate of point R can be, can be had at how many different places? Well, it's very simple. 
Once we have chosen point P, where can we locate R? R could be, well, there were five different, five different possibilities before. One, two, three, four, five. We have used up one of those. We have used up one of those locations for P. We have four other places where we can put, P, where we can put R. Because remember, X we said, remember X we said was between negative one, right here, from negative one to positive three. Negative one, zero, one, two, and three. One, there are five different, there are five different integers between negative one and positive three. Out of those five, we have used up one of them for p, which means we only have four choices left. Now the x coordinate of point p, or rather x coordinate of point r, can be had at four different places. That means, that means point p can be had at four different places. We are done. That's it. That's your answer. That's our answer. 20 times 3 times 4, 20 times 3 times 4, I can write 20, I can, we can write 20 as 10 times 2 times 3 times 4, this is just 20, don't get confused, okay, I'm just rewriting 20, like 20 as this way because it's easier to multiply, 2 times 3 is, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24, so it's, again, 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 24 times 10 is 240. Don't get confused about this last part. The only reason I put on 20 as 10 times 2 is because so that the multiplication is easier. Because it's always easy to multiply by 10 at the end. So I broke down the 20 as 10 times 2. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Here we have our 24 and then we stick a 0 here. So the answer is 2. There are 240 different triangles that we could have constructed given this constraint. Do you understand? Given this constraint. Now what I would like you to do is to do the problem yourself. Do the problem number 228 yourself using the same exact logic. Nothing is different. Nothing has changed. The only thing is that they have given us wider range of for the x-coordinate and y possible x-coordinate and possible y-coordinates of these three different points. But nothing has changed. The logic stays the same. The method stays the same. The rationale stays the same. Stays the same. Just do it out. The number is going to be larger. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.